So just looking at this graph, the first few questions, well, actually pretty much all this is just looking at the graph. So the first question, is the graph linear or exponential? Uh, this one is curved. So we know this one will then be exponential. Second part, is the graph positive, negative, or both? So that's in relationship to the x-axis. And I can see this graph, um, it goes over, it crosses over the x-axis. So that means this one would be um, both. All right, is the graph increasing or decreasing? So we just look at this going from left to right. And here I see I would start here at the bottom, and I would have to go to the right. And I'm starting at the bottom because it's the furthest point to the left. And as I go to the right, I can see it goes up and up and up. Since it is going up, in this case, that tells me that this one is increasing. What is the equation of the asymptote? Well, again, we're just looking for where this graph begins to level out. And it, it's leveling out over here at the very bottom left. And so I would just follow that line over and the corresponding y value there is uh, negative five. So the asymptote is not just negative five, it, it wants the equation, that's y equals negative five. Because y equals equations will give us a horizontal line like it does down here. Next it wants the x value of the x-intercept. This is not an exact value, so we're gonna have to estimate there. And so, just to the right there, it says this is one. Right in between would be one half or 0 0.5. Um, I don't know, you could say probably 0 0.25 right there, but I'm going to call that a little bit less than that. I'm gonna say that it's 0 0.2. You could even say 0 0.20 if you wanted to, but 0 0.25 would probably work. Now, of course, that would be an ordered pair if it had asked for it. So if you wanted to, you could say this point right here would be the ordered pair, 0 0.2, and then, of course, the y value for all x-intercepts are 0. What is the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept, the x value, it's always 0. So um, hopefully that helps it helps you if with the graph, even if you don't understand what it is, as long as you know the x value is 0. You look at the graph, the x value is 0 right here. I can see that that's going through this point, and that would be at 0, negative 1. So I've got the ordered pair 0, negative 1. That's my y-intercept, and that answers all these questions. Here's our objective for the day, then. I can compare rates of change and y-intercepts. So just like we saw in the bell work, we're going to be finding y-intercepts, but we're going to be comparing them. And then the rates of change, well, that's just another way to say slope. So we'll be using the slope formula today. Take 30 seconds, copy that down, then we'll get started. Comparing rates of change and y-intercepts, what we'll need to remember on this is that when it says rate of change, it's really saying that we're looking at slope. Okay, so since, it's, since rate of change is slope, we use the slope formula. So it's a fraction line with two subtraction signs. And when we put this in the calculator, it's true that we need parentheses around the numerator and the denominator like this. And then the fraction line is just a divide button. So I believe on the assignment, it wants these as, uh, these rates of change as fractions. If you put it in the calculator like this, it's just gonna give you a decimal. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to, once you get the decimal in the top left, you're gonna see the button that says math right underneath the alpha button and then you just push enter, enter. And the calculator will change whatever decimal you have into a fraction. So we're gonna use the slope formula. If the line is straight, then we can use the stair step method, but it really is up to you. Some students like to just stick with the slope formula because it's something that's familiar and it's something we've been doing, and you're welcome to do that. But uh, on straight linear graphs, you can just use the stair step method. So the other thing we'll need to remember is that if we look at a graph and we see that it's a straight line, so then it would be linear, um, then we, we have to find, we have to find uh, ordered pairs ourselves. 
Okay, so you're looking at the grid corners. Hopefully you can find a nice grid corner to use because we don't want any decimals in those ordered pairs. If we see that the graph is curved, so it would be exponential, then uh, we use the x values from the, from the interval. Okay, so the interval, you got uh, the, the square bracket like this, then you got some number, and you got a second number, and then it closes with the square bracket like this. But both of those are x values. Okay, so this is an x value, that's an x value. We use these to determine what the corresponding y values are, and then we can plug them into the slope formula. So we don't use the stair step method usually if it's some kind of exponential graph. We use the slope formula for those. Now, it says we want to know which is greater, which is part of our objective today. Can we tell, can we compare rates of change, specifically which is greater, which is what it's going to ask on the assignment. If it's greater, the number is just bigger. That's really all it is. And we're not looking at negatives or positive. You can really ignore negatives if you see any. We're just looking for whichever number is bigger than the other one. So its location on a number line really isn't important. I guess the one that's farthest from zero would be the most appropriate answer, which means you could look at this as absolute values, but I assume you probably don't rem remember those because we don't deal with them very often, but either way. The next thing it says is we're going to be comparing y-intercepts. So if you look at a graph, so let's you know, draw graphs. It may not be very pretty, but you got an x-axis and a y-axis, and you can, of course, you'd have two of these because we're comparing this with two different graphs. Uh, what you're doing is you're looking for, let's say that maybe one is linear like this one, but maybe this one here is um, exponential like this one. So the y-intercept is really just a visual check, just like we've been talking about with y-intercepts. Can you look at the graph and can you find what the y-intercept is? Well, the y-intercept is just where the graph crosses, the line of the graph crosses the y-axis, which is the vertical number line. So if I were looking for y-intercepts on these two graphs, I can see this one here in orange for the one on the left and this one in orange here on the right. To determine which one's greater, it's really meaning which one is higher on the graph. So you can see from these two graphs, this y-intercept compared to the one on the right is higher. So this one we would say has a greater y-intercept. Now again, did I actually have to calculate anything right there? No, I did not. You're welcome to if you'd like. You can compare the y-values. And whichever one has the most value uh, would be the one that you'd use. Not, not uh, negatives and positives do matter with the y-intercepts. But again, you should be able to visually see the location on the graphs and determine which one is greater. Uh, again, or higher is really what it's saying. So we want to find the rates of change for both graphs, A and B. You'll notice that on this one, it does not give us an interval because these are straight lines. So it's not giving us an interval because you should be able to find the slope or the rate of change, it's the same thing, on straight lines. But we still need two ordered pairs on the graph. So let's start with graph A here. And on graph A, let's kind of get graph B out of there. Graph A, let's, let's start with the rate of change. So I've got my slope formula, my rate of change formula. I know it's x is on the bottom, y is on the top from the ordered pairs. Now, since it's not giving us an interval, I will choose the y-intercept as one of the two ordered pairs. And so I follow the y-axis, the vertical number line, to where it meets the red line, which is right here. So that would be this point. That's the location on the graph, which the x value is 0, and the corresponding y value is negative 5. So where the x is 0, in my slope formula, x is going on the bottom, so I'm going to put a 0 here first on the bottom. And the y value that corresponds with that is negative 5. So I'm going to put negative 5 on the top because y is going on the top. So this represents an ordered pair, but I need another one. And as it turns out for graph A, you could use this ordered pair, this one, or this one. It doesn't matter which one you choose, but you, you, your slope will be the same because it's a straight line. So 
most most students would probably opt to use this one, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use this one on purpose, just because uh, you'll see that it doesn't matter which ordered pair we use, we're still going to get the same slope. So let's get rid of these and focus just on this one. So I see that its x value here is 2. So for my ordered pair, I have an x value that's 2. x is go first. And then it has a corresponding y value that's 1. So I now have an x value that's 2. And for my slope formula, x is go on the bottom. So I'm going to put 2 on the bottom. The corresponding y value is 1. So I put the y value on the top because that's where the y values go. So I'm ready to put this into the calculator. And when I do, I'm going to put parentheses around both the numerator and denominator. Remember, the fraction line here is just, it's just a division sign. So you'll push the divide button on the calculator. So when you put this into the calculator, you will get a rate of change or slope that is, uh, it's 3, it's positive 3. Now, you could say that it's also 3 over 1. If you wanted to show that the line goes up 3 and then to the right 1. This is the stair step method right here, which you could have used. If you use this point right here, you would have went up 6 to the right 2, and 6 divided by 2 is still 3. So it doesn't matter, um, again, which ordered pair you use on a straight line, but you have to, you have to find those points okay? because, again, they're not going to give us an interval. So we have the rate of change, 3, and we also found the y-intercept because it's just one of the ordered pairs that we used. So that's graph A. Let's go to graph B then. In graph B, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to find the rate of change with the slope formula. So my x's will be on the bottom. The y's will be on the top. And since I can see the y-intercept, I'm going to use it. So I can see that this is my y-axis. The red line goes through it here. So, of course, the x value is always 0, but this corresponding y value is 1. Now, we need another ordered pair to use in the, in the slope formula. But first, I see the x value is 0. x is going on the bottom of the slope formula. So there's my 0 on the bottom. Its corresponding y value is 1. So I put 1 on the top. The order of these does matter. It's always x and y. And their location in here does matter. x is on the bottom. y is on the top. But I, I did find the y-intercept. I need some other ordered pair. You have this one you can choose from, this one, this one, this one. That's all the ones that I see. Okay, so you can use the two that are closest to each other. You can two that are you can use two that are kind of far away. It doesn't matter. If we're going to put this in the calculator anyways, so I'm going to use these two. So this green ordered pair, the location on the graph, I see the x value is 4. So it's 4, and then its corresponding y value over here showing negative 1. So once again, the x value is 4. So I put the 4 on the bottom. x is on the bottom. Its corresponding y value is negative 1, negative 1 on the top. And this is just something I need to put into the calculator. I'll put parentheses around the numerator and denominator. The fraction line represents the di division button, divide button. And when you put this into the calculator, it will give you a slope or rate of change of negative, well, it's going to give you the, the decimal first. I skipped a step. It's negative 0 0.5 is what it's going to come out to on the calculator. So to change this into a fraction, once again, just in the top left, you're going to see the button that says math. It's right below the alpha button. It should be green, the alpha button, just one button below that. And then you're just going to push enter, enter, math, enter, enter. And this changes that into a fraction, because on the assignment, it wants it as a fraction. Negative 1 over 2. And that's the rate of change for graph B. So that's all the information we need for graph A and B to, to answer the two questions. So which graph has a greater rate of change? Well, I can see from graph A, it had a rate of change of 3. And graph B it had a rate of change of negative one-half. 
or negative 0 0.5. It doesn't really matter how you compare them. As long as you understand that 3 is a bigger value than 1 half. Again, I don't care about the positives or negatives. So in this case, graph A has the greater rate of change. How about the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept for graph A, um, right here, 0, negative 5. Graph B has a y-intercept of 0, 1. And once again, I can see that graph B has a higher value there, uh, a higher y-intercept value. So that means that graph B definitely has a greater y-intercept here. So again, on the assignment, you're going to have to put in the ordered pairs for the y-intercept, both of them. And then I believe the rate of change for both, it's still going to ask for them. You can't just say A or B. Um, you still need to find those, and then you can answer the questions. For the graphs, find the rates of change and the y-intercepts. Use the interval 0, 2, and we can determine which one is greater of the rate of change and the y-intercepts. So... Up here, these are curved, so we're definitely using the slope formulas on this. And they say right here that our first x value is 0, and then the second x value is 2. So right off the bat, you could start filling in your slope formulas, but I'm going to wait to do that. So here's my slope formula. Always subtraction with division in between. And for the ordered pairs, I'm going to put my x's on the bottom and the y's on the top. So first up, I will start with the x value that's 0. So that's uh, right on the y-axis. That's an x value that's 0. So I follow this line down, and I find where the line, the red line, crosses this, this uh, x equals 0 line. Now again, that's a y-intercept. But it's showing that, that value here. That's at 0, negative 3. So, of course, the x value is going to be 0 because it's the value they told us to use. And the x's go on the bottom for my slope formula. The y value is negative 3, and the y value is going above on the slope formula. So I have over here on the left, x is 0, y is negative 3. But then it says to use an x value that's 2. So I can see that x is 2 on the x-axis right here. And I'm going to have to follow that line down until I meet up with the red line. So I'm going to follow this down. Uh, kind of a cur curved line, but looks like it goes all the way down here to uh, the corresponding y value that's negative 12. So this would be an ordered pair of x is 2 and the y value is negative 12. So now that I have these, I can put these into my slope formula. The x value is 2, x is going on the bottom, so 2 on the bottom, y value is negative 12, y value is going on the top. So I put negative 12 on the top. All I got to do is put this in the calculator. And what I do, I just need to make sure I put parentheses around my numerator and denominator right there. So let's see what we get. So my calculator gave me the decimal, which is negative 4.5. We can, we can keep that as a decimal. That's fine. Um, and, and do understand when you're typing this in, the minus sign and the negative sign, these are different buttons on the calculator. So make sure you use those as different buttons. So that's my rate of change. In fact, we, we also found the y-intercept there at, at 0, negative 3 for graph A. But let's go to graph B then and see if we can figure these ones out. So we'll start with the rate of change. And yes, we're going to use the slope formula. X is on the bottom, Y is on the top. Always subtraction, and it's always the fraction line, which is just division. So in the interval, it says to use X is 0. So I find X is 0 on my X number line. Horizontal number line, there's 0. If I follow that down, I, I end up at a y value that's negative 1. So I get this ordered pair right here at 0, negative 1. So my x is 0. It goes on the bottom of my slope formula. y value is negative 1. It goes above on the slope formula. Then the second x value it says is 2. So I find 2 on my x number line. There it is. I follow this line down. to the graph, which is, uh, it's about right here. So I'm going to have to estimate my corresponding y value. So I'm going to bring that line over. And uh, if I had drawn that better, it wouldn't look like 2.5. It looks like it's just a little bit below, okay? Because this is right in the middle. That would be negative 
2.5. I'm going to call this the x value I know is 2, but the y value, I'm going to call it negative 2.4. Now, if you put two, negative 2.5, I assume you'd still be okay, but uh, again, it, it still is an estimation either way. So the x value that I have is 2, and the y value that I have is negative 2.4. So if in trying this, you had gotten something different, that's okay. You don't have to have exact the exact same value because we're just comparing the, the rates of change. So I'm going to put this numerator and denominator in parentheses. I'm going to put it in my calculator. Let's see what happens. So parentheses, negative 1, minus negative 2.4, close parentheses. The fraction line is the divide button, then parentheses, 0 minus 2, close parentheses. Enter, and for this graph, I get negative 0 0.7. So my two rates of change, graph A has a rate of change of negative 4.5. Graph B, so that's graph A, graph B has a rate of change that is negative 0 0.7. Uh, now, it, it, we're asking which of these is greater, meaning we don't really care about the negatives on these. You could say it's an absolute value, that's fine, but I can see that graph A in that, at least in that interval, it's changing faster than graph B is. And you could even consider this with kind of like lines. So if we, um, if we were to just connect, connect those two points that we put on the graph with lines. Okay, so purple to green on graph A, purple to green in graph B. I can see that this line that I've drawn in, in blue, and I don't care that it's curved in between, not even for graph B. This graph A line is much, much steeper than the graph B line is. So the steepness, which is slope or rate of change, is much steeper for graph A, so it has a greater rate of change. Next up, for the y-intercepts, which we found for both, for graph A, we have 0, negative 3, and for graph B, we have 0, negative 1. When it's saying which one is greater, it's asking which one is higher, and that would be from graph B. Now, you could just compare the, the y values. You've got negative 3 for graph A, negative 1 for graph B. Negative 1 is, is higher than negative 3 for this number line. So, again, it, you'd get graph B no matter which way you compare them, or at least you should. For the graphs, find the rates of change and the y-intercepts. No problem. And then we'll use the interval negative 4, 0 if necessary. Well, it's only necessary if the graph is exponential, and right now, that's talking then about graph B. So I do not need the interval for graph A, and you can see negative 4, negative, where x is negative 4 right here, we get a fractional value for corresponding y value. So it wouldn't even be useful to use that, especially for a straight line like this one. We can just use ordered pairs that are very nice to find. But for the for a exponential one like graph B, yeah, it's nice to see uh, specific values to use, even if we do have to estimate those y values. But on a straight line, we shouldn't have to do that. So let's focus just on graph A for now. And I'm going to put together a slope formula. So remember, it's always subtraction in the top and bottom. And then we got our fraction line. X's are on the bottom and Y's are on the top for our ordered pairs. But again, I do not have to use the, the interval negative 4, 0. So which ordered pairs will I use? Well, the y-intercept is nice, and I can see the y-intercept because I can see my vertical number line, the y-axis. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I see the red line goes through that y-axis at negative 2. So this would be the ordered pair, 0, negative 2. Now, my 0, negative 2, I'm going to put as the first ordered pair, but if you wanted to use it as the second ordered pair, you could. So for me, the x value that is showing is 0, so I'm going to put 0 on the bottom. Its corresponding y value is negative 2, so my negative 2 will be on top. So we need another ordered pair, and it looks like there's two others to choose from. You have this one here, which is at the ordered pair, negative 5, negative 5. And then you have this one up here in the top right, which is at 5, the x value is 5. And, and then the corresponding y value, you can bring that over there, is 1. So that's an ordered pair of 5, 1. I'm going to use 5, 1 just because they're positives. But you're welcome to use the negative 5, negative 5 if you'd like. You'd get the same slope. So my x is 5. x is going on the bottom. So 5 on the bottom. 
the y is 1, and y is going on the top, so 1 on the top. Well, from here, I can put this in parentheses, and I can see what this gives me on the calculator. So parentheses, negative 2 minus 1, all over, so that's the divide button, parentheses, 0 minus 5, close parentheses, and when I put this in the calculator, I get 0 0.6, or just 0 0.6, either way. But again, this the assignment does not want this in decimal format, so I'm going to have to push math, enter, enter. And that will change this decimal into a fraction for me. When I do that, it's saying that it's 3 fifths. So that is my rate of change. And like I was saying before, if you wanted to use stair step method, you could. So I'll, I'll start from negative 5, negative 5, and come up to zero two, negative 2. So you can see it's like driving on streets. You can't go through the squares there. Right here, I would have to go up. And then I would have to go to the right on these streets because the graph is kind of like a map. And each ordered pair is a location on the map. But how far up did I go? Well, I would count boxes. One, two, three boxes. So I went up three. So as a slope or rate of change, up three, that's my rise. And since it was up three, that means I'm looking at positive three. And then I'm going to go to the right. That's for my run. Not my runs, just my run. And then this is to the right, one, two, three, four, five. So I went to the right five. That's my run to the right five. Since it's to the right, that also is positive, which really would just show as three-fifths. So you can see we have the same value up here. That's up three to the right five as well. So that's my rate of change for graph A. And we did also find the y-intercept. Again, this, this would be two boxes you got to fill in, and the x value is always zero for any y-intercept. So let's now look at graph B. So we want the same information as just, remember what it said at the beginning, it wants us to use that interval, interval in the top left there, negative four, zero. So uh, the good news is that zero, this is an x value. This is not an ordered pair, this is an interval. These are both x values. x is zero, that means this is asking us to find the y-intercept as well. But let's start with the x value that's negative four there first. So this is my first x value. So on my graph, I find negative four. So I look at my, my graph. It's negative 4 on the horizontal number line. That's the x-axis right here. Boom, I found it. It's right there. So I'm looking for negative 4 here, and I'm going to follow this line until I get to the red one. So I followed up. I didn't even have to go that far, but I end up at this location on the graph. Now, of course, the x value is uh, negative 4, but I'm going to follow that line, the horizontal line, over to the y-axis, and that's showing a y value that is 1. So that's my ordered pair. I forgot my slope formula in this one. Here we go. Slope formula. X is on the bottom. Y is on the top. And I have an X value that's negative 4, so that will be on the bottom. And a corresponding Y value that's 1, it's on the top. Okay, so that's the same green ordered pair, negative 4, 1, but X on the bottom, Y on the top. But then it says, well, we want the other X value to be 0. So that's on the Y axis. Again, if, if you didn't know that was 0, you just look at the numbers, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So I'm going to follow that line down to the graph, and I end up at this location. Okay, so again, the x value I know is 0 because it even told us in the interval, but its corresponding y value showing is negative 3. So if the x value is 0, x is on the bottom, so 0 on the bottom. The y value is negative 3, and y is going on the top, so there's my negative 3. When I put this in the calculator, I'll put these in parentheses. And, uh, well, let's see what this is. Uh, oh, I get negative 1 out of that. Okay, so that is my rate of change, negative 1. We do have the y-intercept at 0, negative 3. We are now ready to compare the two graphs. So which graph has the greater rate of change? Now, if the 3 fifths doesn't really make sense to you, you can use the decimal, 0 0.6 compared to, again, I don't care that it's negative, but 1. So graph B with a, a rate of change of negative 1 means it's changing faster. So which graph has the greater rate of change? This is going to be graph B. Which graph has the greater y-intercept? So we're looking at the height on the graph. And uh, this one has a y-intercept of 0, negative 3. Graph B does. 
ref A has a y-intercept of 0, negative 2. Negative 2 is higher. So for this one, we say which graph has the greater y-intercept. Ref A does because its y-intercept is higher. It is just for that reason. We don't care if, like these two graphs, we don't care if one's straight. We don't care if one's curved. We don't care if both are curved. We don't care if both are straight. It doesn't matter. Its location is all that matters for your y-intercept. So again, this is just a visual check on these ones. Uh, the y-intercept is really still just a visual check. Of course, there's some calculating with the rate of change, but not so much with the y-intercepts. Here's our objective again. I can compare rates of change and y-intercepts of graphs. And we went over three different examples of, of, again, it's just with graphs, right? We're not even comparing tables or equations right now, just, just the graphs.